well so this is gorgeous although I've got plenty of photographs of this shed the water at the moment the light is shining beautifully on it and it's perfectly still it's perfectly flat so it'd be worth getting a photograph on this so I've just done some metering and this is giving me f16 at 125th of a second with that sun out I think it's perfect I'm on an 80 mil lens so things are going to be closer in amongst these reeves so I can get nice and low without that without a tripod and I'm now looking at my horizon nice and straight shot taken <laughs> I shot two films at the creek Ilford Delta 100 and Fuji Acros I developed the Delta in 510 Pyro a semi-stand development I often use this developer for Delta and Scapes the semi-stand and staining of the pyro prevents my highlights from blowing up and nearly always leaves me with good negatives with bags of tonality. The Fuji Acros on the other hand I developed in D23 and I've not shot this film for some time and after looking at the negatives my 8.5 minutes rotation development proved to be a bit underdeveloped and I could see that by looking at the negative edge markings, they looked a bit faint. However, the negatives still looked great and will be no problem later on in the darkroom. If you stick around that long, I'll show you at the end how the prints turned out. For now, let's look at the camera and the rest of the shoot at Newtown Creek. And if you're confused of the term twin lens reflex or single lens reflex, otherwise known as TLR or SLR or DSLR if you're in the digital world, it's basically a camera which uses a mirror system so you can see through the lens in your viewfinder and see exactly what you're photographing. Reflex meaning reflected. If I cover the lens on an SLR, the viewfinder goes dark. On a twins lens, if I cover up the lens, you'll still see the scene. But if I cover the other lens, which is the viewing lens, again, it goes dark. So a twin lens reflex or TLR camera is typically a camera with two lenses of the same focal length at the front instead of one, commonly known as waist level viewfinders. Some, such as the Mimiya C330, you can change the front lenses for a different focal length, but with this Yashica, you're stuck with 80mm, unless you want to purchase different converters. I'm not too sure of the benefits of a TLR, but it is a brilliant and fun camera to use, and it's also very comfortable. Don't you just love film photography? I'm down here today on Newtown Creek, a beautiful nature reserve. It's low tide, the sun's out, and it's so quiet and peaceful. And I bought out with me the Yashica Mac 124G, which is a 6x6 medium format camera. Inside, I've chosen a roll of Fuji Acros 2 film, which is a little bit contrasty, quite a nice film to shoot. And also, when I get back, it's up to me to decide how I want to develop this film to see how it looks, get in the darkroom, make some prints, everything's hands-on. And that's why I like shooting film, and that's why all you guys and many others love shooting film as well. And this camera is proper simple to use. It's got a beautiful 80 millimeter Yashinon lens on there, which is about 50 millimeter equivalent on 35 mil cameras. That's the lens there, and that's the viewing lens. So that does nothing other than lets you see through the viewfinder what you're gonna be taking a picture of. That's the actual lens there that projects your scene onto the film. And you've got two dials on the side of the camera. One is for your shutter speed, and the other one is for your aperture. And the shutter speeds on this go bulb mode from one second all the way to one five hundredth of a second. And the apertures on the lens is from f3.5 all the way to f32. And because there's no mirror inside slapping about, it's a leaf shutter attached to the lens. So it just opens and closes nice and quietly. There's no mirror slapping about, so it's quite good to use handheld on slower shutter speeds. Maybe one thirtieth of a second, you could probably get away with it. And it has got a built-in light meter as well, and that goes up to 400 ASA. And the light meter works really well as long as the proper batteries are inside. The dilemma I've got at the moment is, do I take a shot when the sun's gone in, or do I keep the shadows in the shot? Which is giving me F11. I want to shoot this at F11 and keep the shadows in. So that's the ground glass that I look through. And the scene comes through the viewing lens there. And that's the ground glass that I look through. And you've got this little tiny whoop, little magnifier that I can pop up so I can see my focus. I think this scene will actually suit a wide lens, but the stairs are quite dark from over there. So I found my composition. I've had to come quite a way back with this 80mm lens to get 
the composition in. I've been to this place many times to take my photographs and I always come away with something different, uh, whether that's using a different film camera, using a different film, different developing technique, whatever. I always come away with something different. And being a film photographer like you guys, we can use different cameras, different lenses, different film stocks, different developers, developing techniques. You know, it's, it's hard to get bored with film photography. And it's so easy to revisit places time and time again and try out new cameras and different film stocks, etc., etc., and see what you get. And the funny thing about this place is it never changes. The same boats are always here. In fact, the only thing that changes is the seasons, the tide and the clouds and the lighting conditions. Um, but that's OK. I can shoot similar things what I've done before, but they just look different, you know, in every picture that I take. And it's a beautiful thing, photography, especially on film where you have fewer chances than digital. Having only 24 shots in my bag, I find myself taking my time, relaxing and pondering slowly around the creek, staring at different compositions and how it's lit by the sun, trying to imagine in my mind what it would look like behind glass in a frame. Even after developing, if I have one or two negatives that work, then I've had a result and a good day shooting my camera. And I've only come here today because my dog, George, the one-eyed pirate, <laughs> now blind and deaf shih tzu, has gone to the groomers. So I've got a couple of hours to kill. No point in going home. This is only 15 minutes away from where the groomers are. So I thought I'd bring out my gear, take some photographs and bring you guys along for the ride with me. And on infinite scenes like this shed here, I don't have to use the magnifying glass to look through the ground glass. I can just peer through it, set my focus to infinite, and just point it in the right direction. <laughs> so simple. But if you guys can see, so there's the ground glass there. It's nice and bright when you're looking through, doing your comp composite and uh, framing, and getting your focus in as well. Nice and bright. I've also put a little lens hood on there as well that I got from uh, Bit by Bit Photo out in Texas. Lovely guy called Tim Soderstrom. And he sent me that nice lens hood for this Yashica. I've got a couple of filters for it, a yellow filter and a, a very light green filter. I've never used that one, uh, but I won't use filters with this Acros. I'm more than likely to put the yellow on with the uh, Ilford Delta 100. <laughs> 12 shots done already. <laughs> Wow, let's get over on to the Ilford Delta. I'm going to go behind the beach up to load the film where it's uh, subdued light behind there. Uh, get on with the Ilford Delta 100 and I'm going to put a yellow filter on and uh, take a load of shots as well. 12 shots left. Can't believe that went so quick. Right, let's, uh, so that's the Fuji Acros 2 film. I don't know why these are expensive. This is about £15 a roll. Whereas the Ilford Delta is uh, decently priced at around eight or nine pound a roll. I don't know why this stuff is more expensive, but the one thing good about this uh, Fuji Acros 2, if you're doing long exposures such as pinhole photography or, 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 or late in the afternoon or something like that, uh, late at night, um, the reciprocity failure doesn't kick in until about two minutes, which is fantastic. You, you ain't got to sit there and try and work out how much more time to add, although it's not hard. But um, it's a great film for that sort of, for long exposure photography. And Ilford Delta 100, this is all fresh film. Um, and this stuff is absolutely beautiful. They call it their professional film. Shell core technology they've got um, on their grain side of things. So... I think where emulsions years ago, emulsions like your, your FP4 is kind of like a standard uh, traditional emulsion. The uh, lab guys changed the emulsions around and did some better things, such as this film here, but I'm not too clued up with all the technical side of things, um, how all that works. But all I know, this is a very sharp film, beautiful tonality, and an absolute treat to shoot. <laughs> that should put me out on freezing. So I've loaded the uh, Ilford Delta 100 into the Yashica Mat 124G and I've put this little tiny yellow filter on as well. In fact, one thing I haven't tested 
how much stops I should use for that filter. I mean, I'm, in te I'm thinking maybe none at all, but it's best just to have a quick check. I'm using my light meter for that uh, in spot mode. And I can just meter up somewhere. Something over there. F8, check again, F8, put the filter over, F5.6. So it's about half a stop. So the light's changed now, clouds are coming in. Um, I'm down to 160 F8, 160 and F8. So I'm at 5.6160th of a second now. Things have certainly changed. I think by putting the yellow filter on the lens, I was giving the film a very slight hint of more contrast, but I did notice that the images were a bit softer than the Acros. The lenses were clean as a whistle, but maybe adding the yellow filter softened my pictures slightly, even though it's a Roly filter for the Roly Flex cameras you think it would be mustard. Mustard is in good, not colour. So I've nearly finished the Delta, oh man, I'm so cold. Uh, and I could guess you guys are saying, why aren't you taking a shot at the bridge? I've got quite a few of this already, but I'll take one anyway. See what you guys think. The light has really gone, dropped now. Um, so I've just got here in time. This bridge doesn't really do much for me, but maybe it probably best the other way. Oh, the prints come out really nice, but I'm really gutted. I didn't realize on the negative, there's a little tiny mark there, which is arcing where, uh, when I was loading the film into the uh, developing tank onto the spiral, uh, somewhere I've, I've, I've just kinked it very slightly. It's very rare that I do that. Oh, I can see it right there, which is a real shame. Digitally, obviously I can take that out. In the dark room, that'll just be an absolute nightmare. So I'm gonna class that negative as, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna cop out of that one. Trying to get rid of that would be a nightmare. I could actually overexpose the sky, but uh, I like this wispy cloud coming in. So unfortunately, that one's duff. Oh. That's it, the Delta's done. I took a few on the digital, uh, not many, probably won't do anything with those. Let's get back, develop these films and see uh, I can do in the dark room making some prints. Hopefully, I've got something. If I have, guys, it'll be going on Etsy. Uh, so keep a look out for that. He's been groomed. He's been good boy. You've been a good boy. You've been a good boy. Yay! The one-eyed pirate Shih Tzu is all tarted up. George, say hello. <laughs> for those wondering about George, he's uh. He's pretty much lost his sight now, and he's lost his hearing as well. So it's quite hard work, especially when you're trying to get him in from the garden after having a wee or something. But he's happy boy, don't you mate? George! <whistles> George! He ain't hearing me. <laughs>
So if you're still watching by now, I've been in the dark room and I've made some prints. For those that are YouTube members and Patreon members as well, the full dark room session will be on there. I couldn't put it in this video, guys, otherwise it would have been running on too long, but that dark room session will be on for, uh, for Patreon members and YouTube members. I've made some prints in the dark room this afternoon. I've been in here for about five hours. I had a massive problem with the enlarger that I had to literally strip down and start cleaning. Um, but I got around it and started to make my prints. I've made this one here, which is really not, these are gonna be on my Etsy page, guys. If you like these prints, they'll be on my Etsy page. I've got some for me and I've got made extras for my Etsy page as well. Uh, I'll put a link in the description, but I particularly like this one of the beach hut. All I did was a little tiny bit of dodging around the water area. So this is quite a nice gloomy, uh, moody looking print and I really like the way that's come out the clouds and the stairs as well I like the print of the stairs a little bit of dodging on the side brickwork to pull some detail and also a little bit of dodging on the stairs as well so these prints took a little bit of time to make but I managed to get there in the end and there's one over there drying at the moment which was the grass on the bench um, I made a print of that because I just like that photograph I saw it when I was there and I, I looked down I thought that's quite interesting so I got nice and low with the TLR and uh, and focused in and took the shot. I think that was at f5.6, so the background's slightly out of focus, which it would be. So a bit of a shallow field, shallow depth of field going on there. But as for those TLRs, they're absolutely fantastic cameras. There's plenty out there to choose from. I like the medium format ones. I think the big brother of all of them is the Roly Flex. I think it's the 2.8 lens. I'm not, I've never actually used one. Um, and they've also got a Roly cord as well. Roly, Roly, whatever you call it. Roly cord as well. Uh, but the TLRs are fantastic, fun cameras to use, you know, because it's through waist level viewfinder through the lens, you can take the tripod away. If you're shooting handheld, you can get so many different compositions and angles and interesting stuff when you're out on your shoot. I really enjoyed that shoot over at uh, Newtown Creek. It was so nice and surreal and peaceful and calm down there. And uh, I was just able to walk around, take those 24 shots and just completely chill out. Then I got George and he was barking at me in the car. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and all that stuff. Massive thanks to everyone that supports the channel. I really do appreciate uh, your help with it. And I'll catch you next time.